Namaste. Many thanks for joining us for this wonderful session with Mr. Raghavendra. Uh, Mr. Raghavendra is a highly specialized uh, yoga therapist who is, uh, it's wonderful to have him as part of the CAPE family. I'm Dr. Amya Mohan, creator of CAPE. Welcome. We'll start off with a brief introduction. Mr. Raghavendra is the director of Swadaya Yoga Institute in Bangalore having received yoga certification on completion of 900 hours TTC from the Yoga Institute, Mumbai. He has completed yoga instructor courses from Swyasa Yoga University, Bangalore, Pilates on MET level one from the Zoom, conduct certified teacher training program and online yoga teaching across the globe. He has experience of having completed over 200 hours in Ashtanga Yoga. His main teachings are around why yoga? What is yoga? So yoga is discipline, a way of life, the science of well-being, youthfulness and smiling, he says, which helps us to improve our energy levels and have a calm self through a very holistic approach, which you'll get to hear about a bit more today. Our main objective really for the series uh, and this particular session is to inspire and motivate oneself and others to practice and feel the authentic richness and traditional essence of yogasanas, pranayama, which is breathing, and meditation, which helps us to stay in the present moment and particularly relevant in today's busy life. Mr. Raghavendra says, with regular yoga practice, a person can see an overall transformation within themselves, certainly something that has worked for me in the past when I've trained with him. Welcome, Mr. Raghavendra. It's wonderful to have you here today. Over to you. Thank you, Dr. Ramya. It's a wonderful privilege to be a part of uh, CAPE and having the conversation with you and sharing my knowledge and expertise, what I've been gaining through all these years with the help of our gurus and the teachers, whatever Dr. Ramya mentioned about the yoga or the this day, about the, the traditions what we follow or the linings, whatever I, she expressed, the letter words, what I have written, it's all thought by our gurus. Nothing new we have invented here. What we have learned here that we are, I've been trying to use this yoga, traditional yoga techniques, what I, Call or why I follow this, I why I am stressing again and again this traditional yoga, traditional yoga sense. India has been a land of this traditions, of a rich tradition, which started in Nalanda University. Oh, it was headed by yoga and philosophy by great philosophers. If you take Tibet, if you take Himalayas, all the yogis come from here. In today's scenario, we should see that the yoga has been very widely popularized and reached to the his each and every house, every starting from a small child to an elderly person, you can see that everyone is practicing. That's a good uh, uh, thing we can notice in today's generation. It's a good sign. Everyone is very cautious about taking care of their health. During the, especially during this pandemic situation, people have become much more aware of their health. Everyone knows a lot of techniques and the tools and what postures they have to do, how they have to implement. Everyone has learned. So in today's this thing, what the topic what Dr. Ramya has brought out here, right? being a child uh, specialized in psychiatrist and uh, child, child welfare and uh, other things which she specializes. Particularly, she found that when uh, most of the time I used to work in my earlier days with the children, she noticed like in one of our conversation like, um, I'm good in addressing the incidents which is related to the children. So she just approached me, why don't you just talk about this? It's not only with the children. When I start implementing these things to myself, in my family and in my neighbors, with my students, everywhere, I could see a phenomenal change. When addressing a children or an elderly person, it makes a really challengeable, especially a teenager in the scenario, it's very, very challenging if you see, because they have their own set of mindset. They are intellectually, they are very well knowledgeable. In today's scenario, if you see, they are fast, much more ahead than a generation, if you see. If you see, compare to an, any part of the world, any child, if you take, any person, if you take, they are 
having everything at their fingertips, all the information at their fingertips. But the knowledge, when it comes to the seeking information, people have plenty of knowledge with them. But where they are lacking is, what I have observed is implementation. They are not implementing. So this is a sage Patanjali. So I do the picture, what we all worship. From the ages, it has been worshipped. It has its own tradition when it comes to the Vedas, when it comes to the uh, manuscripts and other things, which are the things, traditions you speak about. When it comes to yoga, people start with following the Patanjali, Marshi Patanjali, who has given the Ashtanga Yoga method. Ashtanga Yoga means it's an eight-step method, which we have to climb and reach to the eternal path. So he has given 196 aphorisms in that. What this aphorism says, first one, it talk about Atha Yoga Anushasana. Atha means now we begin the discipline of yoga. How he has given in the first step. So for that, I would like to recite a chant with beginning of all the yoga practice across the world, wherever you see people practicing, it could be an Hatha yoga, it could be an Ashtanga Vinyasa yoga, or any form of traditional yoga, people try. First, what the thing what they do is to offer the salutations to the Patanjali. Well, now I'm going to recite a couple of lines given by Sage Patanjali, then I'm going to explain what is the meaning of that and why, what is the importance of this chat. So, I'm going to begin this. First, we need to sit with the palms joining against each other, thumb touching to the sternum of your chest. Keep your facial muscles relaxed. Keep your shoulders relaxed. Om Yogena Chittasya Padena Vacha Malam Sharirasya Chavaitya Kena Yopakarotam Pravaram Munina Patanjalim Pranjaliran Atosmin Abaho Purushakaram Shanka Chakra Siddharinam Sahasra Shirasam Shvetam Pranamami Patanjalim Om Thank you. So the meaning of this recitation, for whom this recitation, whom we have to chant, why we have to chant, what is the purpose of this chant? Is this restricted to any particular religion? Is this particular to any tradition only for yoga? where others can chant, others cannot chant. What is the meaning? First is that Patanjali is in the way. Sage is in the form of half human and half in the serpent. It has a story about behind that. The yoga has been given by Ishvara, the scripts. If you get back to the very long ancient scripts. So let me just give the important the meaning of this prayer first. Yogena Chittasya. When we start doing yoga, where it starts working? Chitta. Chitta is the mind. Chittasya. First, it will gonna bring work on your mind. Keep your mind calm. Keep your mind relaxed. If your mind is calm, if your mind is relaxed, if it is focused, then only you will be able to listen to the person who is in front of you. Or you can focus, you can see, or you can listen, you can understand what the other person is trying to convey. But if the mind is not in its place, you cannot do either of these things. Next, chittasya padena vacham. Pada means the words, what we express. It improvises the gram, grammar, the way you speak, the way the tongue twists when you uh, chant the Sanskrit mantras. Any word, any syllable, if you take, there is a twisting happens with the tongue and the entire teeth of your, in the mouth, if you see. Malam sharirasya. So how you are internally, how you are working with your internal organs, how you are cleansing, it is the food. So Sage Patanjali has given three things for us. One is yoga, to how to work on our mind, 
Next is the grammar through this, whatever the aphorisms, what is given, when you start chanting with that, when you start understanding about the mind, there your grammar starts improving. Then third is Ayurveda. It has given the Ayurveda, like what food? Though we have all kinds of food, people are aware that in particular season, what food, if you take, what changes it are gonna make happen to your body in certain aggravating situations, what food you have to avoid, what food will gonna be helpful. So this knowledge is also given by Sish Patanjali, all these things. Yopa Karotam Pravaram Muni Nam. So all this yoga, yoga postures has been done by our ancient sages from way past decades. It's yoga, yoga has a history of 5,000 plus years. Then, Patanjalim Pranjalirana Tospin. So we bow to him is lotus feet of the Patanjali. So for the Guru, from Patanjali, Guru started learning this in the forests, in the Himalayas, in the deep Tibetan traditions, like people started following. They, they follow different, different traditions. Everyone follows the same concepts, same methods. There is no shortcut to success or to the end path of enlightenment. Enlightenment. Abahu Purushakaram. Abahu means he is having a huge arms, which you can see the many serpents here. Purushakaram. So he's in the form of a man, in form of a human. It's basically a man. Shanka Chakra Siddharanam. One hand he is having a conch, the Shanka, what we call. Chakra is the symbolizes the sun. Chakra Siddharanam is having and sitting stably. Um, then comes Shanka Chakra Siddharanam. Uh, Sahasra Shirasam Shvetam, which is actually in a white form. He has a snow white form with a uh, hundred thousands of serpents, which is staying like behind him. So this is the whole meaning of this prayer. When you start chanting this prayer, anyone who starts begin this practice, you will gonna see that how your mind and body is getting tuned with your internal energies. You will within a few seconds, you will start getting into the focus. You will start getting into the concentration. You, very quickly, you will be onto the mode of begin your practice. So that's why when you see it could be any aerobic activities, any gym activities there. You don't follow any kind of prayers because there you are working on particular uh, task. You are working on your particular muscle. You are working, your focus is on certain particular equipments. Here it is not like that. Here you are going to be focusing on an overall personality. So yoga is not only works on your physical, it works on your mental, it works on your the way you express, it's all about expression. It improves the overall personality development. Next, coming back to the today's topic, what we are talking here. So now you all can see that the when you see a, any speaker or any person who talks in front of you with any of the subjects, topics, even when they are coming in front of you, you can see the gesture of them. Most of them, they'd be so upright. They'll be so pleasing when they talk maximum majority of the posture, irrespective of they are having any musculoskeletal disorders. I'm talking about a healthy person, how a healthy person sits. It's not only for a picture or when you express in front of, when you are speaker, it's not necessary to sit like this, but when you watch yourself or your children's at home, so what they're gonna do, they will gonna sit like this. The moment you come, see if I'm sitting like this, it's a, my comfort zone. I can have a discussion with you. I can have a chat with you. There is no absolutely nothing wrong in this. But what happens in today's scenario, if you see, if a child or if a student, if a teenager of your elderly person who is sitting like this for a maximum duration or a software engineer, if he works like this and sits, so his spinal column is been getting compromised here. So your digestion is compromised here and majority of your oxygen consumption is more here. You require more oxygen when you sit like this. 
that is the reason which many of the people are getting affected with so many internal disorders, with the health factors, if you see. Some people are not able to spend their energy, a lot of energy in the outside activities. The moment if they go, uh, come back from the office, a child comes back from the school, he gets tired. Why? Because of sitting like this. If you sit on a couch, this is now, especially in this pandemic, everyone has uh, the new uh, syndrome has called it's couch, potato couch. Everyone has become a potato couch because there is no video. You can, you're just attending the meetings, listening to them. Okay, fine. You are at your comfort zone. Uh, where at least where you're in your, uh, at your office, you'll be in your formal dresses, you have, someone has been visiting you, someone will be taking care of you. Even the children's, the teacher will be taking care if they sit like this on a disciplinary note, they have to maintain themselves like this. But when no one is observing you, automatically the spine tends to slouch like this. This is an indication of your confidence is lowering. Not only the confidence is lowering, the moment your sternum drops, your energy is Particularly relevant point, very relevant on the, um, as, um, as we know, what we present to the world is a reflection of ourselves. So in that sense, when we are sitting upright, what we are communicating by way of vibes or um, even the effectiveness of our communication is improved. So that's a very valid point. Thank you for raising that. Yes. I just keep observing. I have been a very good, uh, it's been a blessing for me, I could say that always. I observe things wherever I go rather than preach or teach. I'm not here to teach anyone. I'm just here to correct. We are here to correct each other. As long as people are not making mistakes, I don't have any role to play here. Because when it comes to the, why I am just more keen on tying up hands with the science means yoga is all about science. If there is no science, I would have not got this knowledge. If everyone would have taken for granted, since the science is there, people has got that validity. They can validate. Okay, if I sit like this, this will gonna happen. If it's not, if I'm not maintaining at least a decent uh, health, you are just, what you are trying to do is that you are being less in uh, reducing the conditions. If it's uh, any internal conditions, if that exits, if it requires this much of attention, at least with this, following this methods, it will be reduced to this. So you are helping your healthcare professionals. You are healthy, helping whoever is there assisting you. Their work becomes easy. Their medications, whatever they will be giving, they can start acting fast. Even the doctors, they prescribe a few relaxing techniques when before taking them to the uh, operation theaters or by giving any tranquilizers because it becomes their work easy. If the per person, if the patient is panicking, it will become very difficult for them to uh, handle the situations because they already, they are doing so good, uh, enormous energy, enormous science has been put into it. So when it comes to the children's here, so this, the we call the Sanskrit is the mother of all languages. Most of them, they know that in the programming and all this language has been used. So when you use this vocabulary, the person sees that the stammering, people who have the stammering habit from the childhood, they will be able to get away with the stammering at to some extent. If so, it depends on person to each individual to individual. So this is all about, and basically I was just telling this posture, sitting posture makes it very, very important. Even if you sit lean back, absolutely there is no wrong, but don't slouch like this. Resting your spine to the, backrest or the couch, it's not wrong. It's not a wrong posture, but you need to just relax. See that, how oh, I am sitting now. It's been very, my spine is relaxed, but not sitting always like this is also not good. Your spine requires all the five cultural postures. Sometimes you need to twist. Relaxing on the chair, you can twist, twist like this. For a few seconds, it will not so lifting every time now, when, whenever you use your mobile phones, what happens? Constantly your neck is nodded down. We never have a habit of seeing the sky. Where you're gonna see the sky? Sitting at home, you never stay up. When you look up like this, whatever the tension is there in your cervical on the neck, it will just drops down. Even for five minutes or two minutes, if you lift your head, so it will be a very good stretch your thyroid glands. 
And not only that, it just provides a very good blood circulation to the back of your brain. So all the scientific parameters we are trying to reach out in through this holistic approach, what we call here. When you follow this holistically, so that a lot of tensions you can reduce and you, are, you can improve your overall physical health, mental health, and also whatever the food you eat, your digestive system, your immunity will start, uh, will be having a robust immunity, we can say. Yeah. Now I just want to pass it on to Ramya. If you have any of the questions, you can just ask. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Agvindra. That was a wonderful introduction. And as you rightly said, um, uh, it's about integrating the deep-rooted knowledge that's been passed on uh, through generations with the requirements of modern day living. And um, yoga is a beautiful way of doing that. Um, uh, more and more, uh, as even as um, uh, mental health practitioners, we are recognizing and acknowledging and using um, yoga techniques in our day-to-day -day practice. We do find um, certainly uh, the sense of posture, breathing, and the integration of all of those in being mindful um, is a perfect amalgamation really about when we, when we talk about mindfulness, um, which is of course a very popular concept um, now. So uh, that was a very good introduction. I think our, um, we have a couple of questions. Our um, viewers, uh, I'm sure, would be very interested in uh, getting to know a bit more about how school-going children, with all their additional uh, activities that kids are actively doing now, so they've got their curriculum and they've got their co-curricular activities, how can they make yoga an integral part of their lifestyle on a day-to-day -day basis? How can parents facilitate that in today's busy lifestyle, especially with nuclear families and reconfigured families on the rise? There's one common technique out, I would like to bring it out here like this. We follow it here in India most of the time. And most of the things, they know that it's called a super brain yoga in the West they call it nowadays. It is like you need to thumbs up, hold the earlobes, and you need to squat, sit and squat. So when you do the squatting for 20, seven rounds we suggest them to do or 21 rounds basically on a religious practice we used to do this then later on we just understood that it just integrates bring the coordination between the left brain and the right brain and it brings out the lethargy in your mind very quickly and people for children they can they are always flexible but for adults who are having uh, issues with the existing pre-existing conditions with the back or the knee, they should do it with the supervision. Especially because busy parents who are on their, yes, uh, yes, who are probably working parents, from home yes, when they're on their Yes, <laughs> chairs de definitely, the definitely. This, uh, I've, come, I've been coming across with so many people, like I've been reaching out to so many people very, very recently in a couple of months, telling that I have started getting pain in my neck. I started getting a shooting pain in the mid back. So then they, when I start explaining the concepts of this posture, they quickly realize that, yes, sir, what you're telling is perfectly correct. Since we were at the office, we had a uh, privilege to stand up and we were standing like this to having a communication with them. We used to walk, take a couple of walk steps and we used to do all these things in between. We, we used to take a break, a couple of breaks. But after coming home, all these things have gone. This is the reason what we are, why we are getting these things. So this this is one more thing I would like, like what the Dr. Ramya added is mindfulness. That mindfulness is needed in implementing. People are very good. There is no doubt of, they are getting the good knowledge through the, all the sources, but try to implement, implementation is lacking. So taking mindful breaks during the day. So even if it's between meetings for parents or for children, um, I think it would be really, really helpful, isn't it? Uh, wouldn't you say? Sorry, one second, just bear with me. 
So yes, even with um, even with children, um, it can it can be worked around their school days. What you're saying to me, and um, absolutely, and and what you mentioned the squatting posture. It's a perfect amalgamation of actually using your physical body. Squatting, we know, is a wonderful way of stretching in every sense, and it keeps our our legs and our gluteal muscles strong, um, as well as provides provides us with an alignment, doesn't it? And really does kind of support our posture. So in more ways than one, I think it integrates the mind and body. A uh, very, very simple, but very effective technique to practice mindfulness. Um, absolutely. That's wonderful. Uh, one we more have technique another... I would like to give here, just uh, mm -hmm. sorry to interrupt. So this yes, is, sorry. it becomes very important for the parents to sit with the children's to have the breakfast and the lunch, whatever the best possible timing they would could spend with them. And the next thing is that when they sit with them, when they st start having that quality time, you need to have that smiling or the laughing uh, incidents with them. Because as the kids grows up, what happens, they'll be in their own world because they'll be having their priorities, their exams, their assignments, all these things will be jammed up. That's where the, um, what we call the affection and the bonding gets uh, slightly getting delayed. It's no doubt like people spend a very good quality time, but as they grow, they need to just spend this kind of time more with them. And perhaps so even a, move yeah. towards having these mindful yoga breaks together. Of course, um, of course. Yes, yes. Um, that sounds certainly uh, like a wonderful uh, family bonding time as well, whilst we work on ourselves. Um, there is another question that would be particularly, I think, relevant in the context of COVID, and that's about yoga and immunity. Of course, we know that yoga, traditionally yogic methods have been used to boost immunity. How is this particularly relevant for children of today's day and age? How can parents support their children and themselves as a family yes. to stay more healthy through yoga? I would like to suggest a couple of postures which would most of our teachers who just guiding us through the some of the traditions or these things. One thing is we need to sit straight. This is a unique posture for all of us, whether it could be an elder or anyone. When you sit, the first thing you should assure, like if you are able to squat, cross your legs and sit, it will be very, very good like this. So hopefully you can see my legs which has been crossed or you can sit comfortably on the chair. And when you sit, if you have to take your hands back like this, like how you hold the elbows. So the moment you start taking your hands back like this, your sternum opens up. So your sternocleidomastoid, what we say here, this poor particular collarbone, it gets open up. So this, when this get open up, you can just stay wherever you possible. It's not necessary. You have to hold the elbow only, especially children will be able to do it very nicely. So when you make a habit of them to sit like this and looking uplifting the chin, and if you are able to do this particular breathing, 10 breaths or 20 breaths, if you make it a habit, you will see a phenomenal changes in our 10 days regularly. If you start doing this, your lungs starts opening up slowly. Or wherever is possible, it's just if you keep your hand, hold hand like this also, it would be more than enough. If they're having a stiff shoulders or the frozen shoulders, their hand may not be going back. That's not an issue. But at least try. If you start holding here, after a month of practice, it will reach here. This is one technique which you can sit and um, explore for yourself. That is one thing. And how to reach here, this on all, it will take a series of postures will just make them work on their different different joints doing their what uh, where is where they are in their practice which muscle is uh, uh, blocking them which joint has been uh, restricting them to get into this particular postures where where what are the vertebral problems they are having in the cervical in the lower back everything is connected so seeing their posture we will be able to guide them to achieve these postures otherwise Sitting on chair every day, if you're just slowly, slowly taking your hands also, a healthy person. Don't uh, take it like for people who are having a shoulder, uh, frozen shoulder, they can't even move the hand like this. A person who is very flexible, very comfortable without any problems in the shoulders, 
up till here their hand can go but always respect your body do not force your body we would always recommend that don't see the books don't see the videos and practice always whoever the practitioner is there whoever the well versed teacher is there around you take his advice take their these things then only you practice otherwise don't just dive in by seeing the informations because a lot of informations are there but as i told you this kind of limitations will going to be there only a teacher will be able to access by seeing your condition otherwise the doctors would have been told you by this time everyone would have been taken their online consultation they would have given exclusively only this pandemic situation that just made it some part we can just help them otherwise no doctor will advise you sitting there you have to visit to a practitioner to see and assess your conditions yeah This absolutely can. absolutely i think we've got time uh, just a quick couple of minutes for one last question which again is particularly relevant i think uh, for the south asian community but is rapidly becoming a global a global epidemic in its own um, uh, in its own sense um, and that is uh, diabetes so diabetes uh, and more broadly other endocrinological or uh, hormonal conditions um, that uh, can potentially be supported and one of the common questions we hear is um especially because when we're talking about children and young people we're talking about uh, a growing uh, uh, a growing body we're talking about uh, changing hormones growth hormones are quite active um so it becomes particularly relevant i think as you rightly said to make sure that you are learning properly from a well versed teacher who's well able to support some of these uh changes um uh, changes to the body uh anything uh, additional that you think you would like to add to this very quickly yes plenty of the researches has been carried out by the uh, big big institutions yoga institutions regarding the diabetes movement it's been carried out it's not only by doing yoga it has to be complemented with the proper nutrition yes of course the food it's food you need to and the lifestyle take care at most care lifestyle is what you just it's uh, a lifestyle condition it should yeah. be a balanced balanced lifestyle we would like to tell not only mm-hmm. only the lifestyle we don't uh, put any restrictions on that so that you should not have this not have that but it should be a balanced lifestyle it should be a guided lifestyle then you know, for people who are you can we could see that they are not getting into that uh, target of audience which are prone to be diabetic if you see that the cases are going high and high so we can observe so how to bring down so these are the changes we can just bring it not only physical mental and psychological the way we present ourselves it makes a lot of changes in us wonderful uh, one final question um of course uh, the mental health pandemic um or the mental illness pandemic has um um is well on its way to rapidly overtake cardiovascular disease as the biggest cause of morbidity now um in the whole world and uh, covid's really brought it up to the forefront people are talking about it and um yes uh, certainly as a mental health care practitioner i have seen the benefits of yoga um uh, in supporting one's lifestyle uh, uh, complementing it in every way um and supporting mental health optimally uh, what are your thoughts on this and uh, it'd be great to get a few thoughts on it in today's uh, scenario the major concern which is addressing for the majority of the people is the anxiety and the because of anxiety and the depression this both are hand in hand and it's a very it's not such a easy task like when you compare to the other all other diseases all other ailments whatever we talk it's all interdependent because of this anxiety and depression which cause at a psychological level this has this cannot be addressed over uh talk or these things we can just tell them we can guide them like what are the steps they have to take definitely as being a psychologist you know that how how much uh, efforts the psychologist has to put on to help them to take a uh, working on their psychology same way the yoga has a tremendous um, this thing um, hand helping hand in this it's been uh, very helpful when it comes to the addressing anxiety and depression 
both can uh, works wonders i can say people can uplift enormously with this the whole scenario of this program it just starts the end what we what we just uh, i just took out the topic of anxiety and depression here it starts with the beginning what i started with the mm-hmm. postures mm-hmm. there is a lot of connectivity from there to here so that's why i said physically mentally and psychologically how you work emotionally emotional stability all these things will cooperate to being come out of the depression or anxiety it's all works in hand in hand nothing can be worked only individually So Indeed, and life is all about balance, and life is all about interconnectedness. Whether it's our brains or whether it is our lifestyle, and that is the whole purpose, really, isn't it? Of uh, uh, making sure that anything we do, it it works for us all in good balance. And always, I must add, um, under close supervision of your mental health practitioner, your your doctor or uh, healthcare professional. Um, so, thank you very much, Mr. Agvendra, for joining us today. and of course today was only an introduction a teaser really to the work that we will be doing together um because uh, moving forward uh, we will be looking to set up a series uh, specifically for parents and uh, for children um to support uh, from a preventative sense to see how best we can optimize our lifestyle by integrating yoga into it um and how that can in turn uh, prevent many lifestyle conditions and day to day difficulties from showing up so that's the whole purpose of what we're trying to do and even for those um who are struggling with a mental health or a physical health condition how can a practice a, a, a discipline and um disciplined a uh, discipline and informed practice like yoga how can that become part of one's healthy lifestyle and help you optimize your wellness and productivity in every sense so that's the whole purpose of it and we are we are uh, trying our best to achieve this for you as well working alongside with you uh, through the cape family um so uh, if you have any further questions i'm sure you would have feel free to drop us a line we'd be uh, answering we'd be endeavoring to answer all of your questions uh, on our cape website capeforhealth.com um so feel free to email us uh, our email should be showing up here uh we look forward to working with you and growing together many thanks all of you for joining and have a lovely day namaste thank you mr raghavendra namaste